So the RX78-2 is now finally complete. I hope you guys like it. I think this 1 to 144 scale RX78-2 Gundam is a very very good model in its size. I think everything is in proportion from the head, the two arms and the two legs. They make the RX-78-2 look very in scale to the real thing and you have probably noticed the very noticeable big hands as well. So this is just the RX-78-2 Gundam on its own. I haven't put on uh, the remaining weapons. so. I will show you guys with the additional weapons later on in this video but first I would like to show you guys the coloring that I have used on this model. I have airbrushed most of the parts on this Gundam except for the greyish white body armor that you could see. I think the body armor it has a very very light green tint to it and I didn't want to spray the color um, to a lighter white because this is the RX78-2 model and it is supposed to have that older um, white color on it so that's the reason why I have decided to leave it and you guys might think the white body armor looks a little bit shiny. Um, is it because I have the two LED lights on the side that is throwing a lot of light and reflection to it. And under normal um, lighting environment, the Gundam actually looks pretty good. So the colors that I have chosen, first of all, on the main body, it is the Tamiya X14 Sky Blue, which is the main chest body. And then on the body structure, the hands, the hinges, I have used Tamiya Gunmetal X10. For the red torso, the red area on the head unit, as well as the, the feet. I used this color, number 517. It is a very vibrant red color. And then the yellow parts, I used number 643, which is called Indian Yellow. And it is a very nice yellow color, specifically suitable for the RX-78-2. And the red one that I've shown you earlier, this is actually called Flame Red 5.7. And then the remaining parts, I could have used the Tamiya Match Clear, but I have decided not to. But in case if I do change my mind, I will be applying the Tamiya Matte Clear on the white body armor. So it, it will completely get rid of those reflected marks. But I'm not sure if it will change the grayish green color. So I will make that decision later on. So I hope you guys like the um, color selection that I have chosen. I think I have matched the original color as much as possible. Um, the only color that looks slightly different or actually a bit darker and a lot more shinier is the gunmetal color. But I think they look really, really good on this model. So now let me show you the uh, additional weapons 
that also come in this kit. You have two beams for the beam savers at the back. You also have a very nice shield. It has very nice color separation so you can see the white part matching the Gundam body armor, the red matching the torso and the feet and then the yellowy orange color also match with some of the parts on the body and straight out from the box those parts are all separated so you don't need to recolor them if you don't want to but obviously I have airbrushed everything except for the the grayish white color because on the red originally you could see there's a lot of um, shrink marks or mold lines on it by applying the the red color it makes the whole shield look more original and it also looks really smooth next we have the beam rifle which is here it is also airbrushed to a gunmetal color I'm not sure if you guys can see it it is very shiny as well and it has the gunmetal effect It's a very nice rifle. You can also move this left and right, and same as the handle. You can move that as well. Next, we have the cannon. As you can see, I have also airbrushed it to a completely gunmetal color to match with the beam rifle this is a C clip which clips to the back of the Gundam so you could remove that small panel in the middle and then you attach that to the back and obviously this comes off as well and the handle it does move And there's also some very nice details at the back of the cannon as well. And then with the kit, you also have two close hands. So these are the left and right hand for holding the beam saber and you also have the spare left hand with the trigger finger which I will demonstrate the use of this trigger finger with the beam rifle shortly so those are the spare parts that is also come with the RX 78-2 so now I'm going to show you with some of the weaponry on so give me two minutes I'll come back to you guys Here we have the RX 78 2 holding the two beam sabers with the closed hand, and I have also attached the 
shield on the back. I think the Gundam looks pretty cool in this position. And you can also see the articulation on the legs as well as the torso which is twisted to one side as well and same as the head unit and you can really see the gunmetal color showing from the under armor area I think it looks pretty cool So, what I will show you next is to carry some different weapons. So I'll be back very shortly. Here we have the Arix 78-2 with the left open hand and the right hand with the trigger hand holding up the beam rifle and I have also positioned the legs in a moving position and the shield attached to the back as well I think this looks more dynamic so what do you guys think I think the mobile suit look really good in this position and the beam rifle also look really good in that color as well and I particularly like the open hand I think the open hand is very very nice it is in a good shape and the gunmetal color also help to bring out the mechanical side of the hand so I hope you guys like the pose and now I'm going to change to another weapon to show you guys And now we have the Arik 78-2 holding the beam rifle with both hands. I have flipped the spare handle on the beam rifle for the left hand to hold and support as well. Quite a cool pose and I have also twisted the shield to face the other side as well so I hope you guys like it now I'm going to change the position again so bear with me one second and here we have a normal standing position with the right hand holding up the beam rifle and the left hand supporting the bottom of the beam rifle so this looks like the Gundam is on guard what do you guys think? which position do you like the most? So now what I'm going to do is to put on the cannon onto the Arix 78-2 and I'll come back to you guys very shortly. Here we have the Gundam Arix 78-2 kneeing down, holding up the beam cannon as well as the shield in front of him to offer some sort of protection so this position is more dynamic and it really showed off the articulation of this specific RX-78-2 in 
high grade 1 to 144 scale. It definitely looks good in this position. And again, just like the, the beam rifle, I really like the, the beam cannon as well. I think the color really does its justice. It makes the cannon look more realistic. It has the metallic effect and the semi reflective finish does make the cannon look a little bit heavier than just plastic. not sure if you guys would like the position but I personally like it a lot so what's next I'm going to try and put all of the weapons on the Gundam and I'll show you in just a sec so finally I have attached all of the weapons onto the Arix 78-2. What do you guys think? So I have the right hand holding up the beam rifle, the left hand holding up the beam saber as well as the shield, and I've also attached the beam cannon at the back with a C clip. The left hand Normally, when it is holding onto the shield, you would have the hand holding onto the, the grey handle directly underneath the shield. But in this scenario, I have chosen to use the left hand to hold up the beam saber. And as you can see on the ground, I also have the spare beam for the beam saber. The handle is still attached behind the right hand side shoulder and you can also see the small piece of plastic that I have removed from attaching the C-clip to hold on to the beam cannon and there are also one right hand closed fist and the left and right open hand as well so it depends on what position you want to strike you will have to attach the different hands for different application so I hope you guys like the Gundam with all the weapons attached what I'm going to do next is to remove all of the weapons from the Gundam and then I will show you guys the articulation for this Gundam mobile suit. So give me a couple of minutes and I'll come back to you guys straight away. So here I have removed all the weapons from the Arix 78-2 except for the two handles for the beam sabers which you can see is still attached to the backpack everything else has been removed. I have also removed the closed hand and replaced them with the open hands. So before I show you guys the articulation of the Gundam, I would like to show you guys something quickly. So these are just the moving parts on the weapon. So this is the shield. On the underside you have this metallic part there's a peg that you can attach the shield directly to the arm and there is also this handle you could fold up and you can use your left hand closed fist to hold onto this handle as well but obviously you can also attach the shield without the hand holding onto the, the shield handle as well and then earlier I have already shown you guys on the beam cannon you can move this handle and that is the only part that moved on this weapon the C clip can be removed quite easily
and the beam cannon just want to remind you guys that the extra handle it moved left and right as well and same as the laser guide you can move that part as well so there are two moving parts on the beam rifle So now coming back to the Aurix 78-2, I just want to quickly cover the stickers that come with the kit. So I have used the sticker for the eye unit, which is literally yellow eye with the black surrounding. So that is one sticker altogether. And then the, the sensor or the camera at the front, that red square, that is also a reflective sticker. And you also have a square sticker behind the head as well. So I've only used the three stickers. The fourth sticker that you could potentially apply it is for this area. So literally it's just a red sticker with red background and the, the V is colored in yellow. But on this model, I have just colored the V myself in yellow. But I've only done one layer of the yellow. So I will have to apply another layer or two in order to cover the, the small red area that is still showing but if you decided to use the sticker then you only have to do it once and then you will have the the yellow v showing properly and with the kit it's also come with two reflective silver sticker for the eye one on each side if you decide to paint the eye yourself but I just decided to use the yellow eyes sticker provide with the kit save me time to paint the eye area the mouth and the under eye red area that is not painted that's just the color separation from the plastic runner same as this red part here what I've done in addition is to cut out the the extra round bit at the tip of the V fin so now the fin looks a lot sharper so now let's take a look at the articulation so the head unit, you can look up and down. There is a double ball joint. So you can move the head quite a bit. So if I remove the head unit, you can see there is a ball joint there. And then there is another joint underneath. So you can turn the head left, right, up and down you can tilt it sideways as well the arm both arm you could twist it 360 and then you can lift the arm almost vertical which is really really good Let's just reattach the, the left hand the joints are all very tight still but I'm sure it will loosen up over time so the upper arm you can twist that as well and then the elbow it has a double joint so you can make it straight or bend and then bend again 
think that is the no that's more that is the maximum ridge which is really cool and then the hand has a ball joint so you can move it twist it all you want and it is exactly the same for the right arm okay next you have the torso so hopefully I'm not going to scratch off any paint on the torso but you can tilt the torso like so you can see the back open up when I tilt you can twist the torso left and right as well it doesn't tilt left or right unfortunately and then let me lift up the arms so the side skirt you can move them not by much but you can and then the front skirt you can move them individually because I have cut the the two parts otherwise the left and right front skirt would move together but they all have the ball joint so you can cut them so that they move independently the back skirt pretty sure it's fixed yep and then the legs can almost do a perfect split you can twist the legs And then the kneecap has a double joint. So first you lift the leg, you bend 90 degree, and then you can bend further. It's pretty cool. And then for the ankle, you can tilt it down or lift it up. It's quite a large angle and the ankle armor you could move this as well this move up and down and you can move the feet left and right not by much so you can do this <laughs> it's kind of restricted by the ankle armor but you can still strike a lot of different posts if you want in terms of the Gundam being a 1 to 144 scaled high grade RX 78-2 I think this Gundam is pretty good in terms of articulation. At least I could put the Gundam on the kneeing down position when it was holding the beam cannon. So if you ask me whether I would recommend the Gundam RX 78 2 to you guys? The answer is yes, I can strongly recommend it. It is a very, very nice Gundam. Although the real size Gundam is only 18 centi, sorry, it's only 18 meters tall. So this being a 1 to 144 scale Gundam, that means the overall height. Is only 12 and a half centimeters tall so to give you guys the comparison I will put the Gundam narrative and I'll put 
the RX78-2 in front of him and straight away you can see the size different the narrative Gundam is quite a bit taller actually if I put them side by side like this it might be easier to see The narrative Gundam on the left is about a head taller than the RX 78 2. And if I add the Unicorn Gundam right here, I think the Unicorn Gundam is a little bit taller than the narrative Gundam as well. So the Unicorn Gundam is definitely a lot taller than the RX 78-2, especially as you can see the position of the Unicorn Gundam it is not standing up straight. So. The RX 78 2 is definitely a lot smaller in comparison. So, if I put them even closer, then you can see the actual size different. They are both 1 to 144 scale, but it's just the Unicorn Gundam is a lot taller in full scale. So, that makes perfect sense. And now you can see the color different between the white and the grayish green plastic but that is absolutely normal for the RX 78-2. The older generation Gundam tends to have a slightly different color on the body armor so it is still accurate. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this review video of the high grade 1 to 144 scaled Gundam RX 78 2. I know it has been a very long video because there's a lot of things I want to show you to you guys, but I hope you guys find it informative and useful. If you guys like this video, or if you like the RX 78-2 then please leave me a like and if you guys have any questions or comments then please feel free to add the comment in the comment box below hope you guys had a good time watching this video and until next time take care have fun with your model making and model collection and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.